morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we welcome Robert Mueller, our FBI director, to yet another hearing which he has graced us with his presence. The Federal Bureau of Investigation is the anchor of our nation's federal law enforcement and has the important responsibilities uh, not only to combat crime, conduct surveillance, initiate investigations, but uh, now uh, have the responsibility uh, for dealing with the issue of terrorism on top of all their other existing duties. We appreciate the Bureau's efforts to get us uh, answers on our letters, particularly the September uh, 5th uh, letter. Director Mueller, we're trying to get a proposed uh, copy of the uh, Attorney General FBI guidelines. We're trying to uh, identify what specific safeguards will prevent improper undercover FBI spying against domestic groups, citizens, abuse of investigation techniques like pretext interviews, and improper racial and ethnic profiling. Uh, a statement of whether the guidelines of a former Attorney General Edward Levy to protect against improper invasions of privacy uh, were rescinded by former Attorney General Ashcroft, and will they, and if they were, will they be reinstated? We have uh, numerous questions on the anthrax issue. Uh, and we need an explanation of the improper collection of reporters' phone records and what disciplinary action will be taken uh, for the FBI's improper collection of reporters' phone records and abuses, uh, particularly concerning exigent letters and national security letters. Uh, and, and finally, uh, we, we need to know how many FBI agents were devoted to mortgage fraud issues before uh, and after a top FBI official warned about this problem back in 2004. Uh, included in that is, of course, an explanation of why fewer resources were devoted, devoted to mortgage fraud uh, after the 2004 warnings. <clears throat> so that's all we want to know, and that's why we welcome you here this morning. I'd like now to turn to the distinguished ranking member of House Judiciary Committee, Lamar Smith of Texas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Judge Gomer. We're pleased to have uh, Robert Mueller III, director of the FBI, since September 4th, 2001. He's had a long career in public service and in, uh, in the law as well. He's been an assistant United States attorney in San Francisco and in Boston and in Washington, D.C. He served as assistant attorney general for the criminal division in the early 90s, returned to San Francisco in 1998 as a United States attorney and uh, has also been in private practice on at least two occasions with uh, prominent national law firms. He was called back from San Francisco to Washington in early 2001 to be acting Deputy Attorney General, where he served until assuming his current post. Once again, we welcome you to the committee. Would the gentlelady yield? Yes, I will yield to the gentleman. Um, who, who's in charge of this in the Department of Justice, sir? I, I would have to look. I'm not, uh, hold on just a second. It is a Civil Rights Division. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I will follow up on it. Okay. Do, do, you have, do you know who's in charge of the Civil Rights Division? I, I must confess off the top of my head, I do not at this juncture. Uh, it's Thank acting AAG Grace Chung Becker. 
Ah. Yeah, the, the, uh, Miss Becker is coming over. Uh, he is coming over? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Miss Waters. We, we have a hearing scheduled with her. The chair is pleased now to recognize Bill Delahunt, a former Massachusetts prosecutor and a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee as well as Judiciary Committee. Thank you very much. Uh, the chair neglected to uh, mention that we are grateful to the, your chief of staff, Lisa Monaco, and the general counsel that works with the committee, Valerie Caproni. And, uh, and there are two guys with him, but we, we're grateful to them as well. Thank you. Now, uh, you, you've given uh, a, a, a very uh, thoughtful look at the good things that have come out of the, the bureau, uh, which is totally appropriate. On July 28th in uh, Cleveland, uh, we had an FBI and I guess police raid. 200 officers came to uh, Jimmy DeMora's uh, home uh, to find out who paid for the paving to his driveway. And uh, it just so happens he's the chairman of the Cuyahoga County Democratic Party, as well as a commissioner on the county board. And uh, also got involved Frank Russo, the Cuyahoga County Auditor. Can you give us some information about this? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mueller. Uh, we have in Michigan, in the, the county of Macomb, the Republican Party chair, Mr. James Carabelli, uh, announcing uh, that they are, are going to uh, examine uh, wh whether people are using the polls uh, who once lived in foreclosed homes. We have another issue in which uh, attorney Eric Doster, a lawyer for the Michigan Republican Party who is involved in election day challenges to voters, uh, saying that they intend to uh, use the practice of voter caging in which uh, based on returns of, uh, of mail that anybody uh, that fits into that category will also be challenged. Can, can you uh, help us initiate an investigation around these two considerations? Can I, can I be advised of, of the outcome of, of that? Yes, sir. Be yes, sir. We will get back to you. Today and tomorrow? Uh, we'll try to do so. Well, I'll have to get the fact pattern from the from uh, your staff and then uh, consult with the Department of Justice and perhaps have the, uh, the department get back to you. If not, we will get back to you one way or the other. Thank you. And, and thank you very much for your attendance today. Thank you. That ends the uh, committee hearing. Thank you, sir. The committee will come to order. We're delighted that all six of the witnesses are as distinguished and recognized and uh, well-known and favorably received in the Congress as they are, are all present in the Judiciary Committee room. Uh, this anti-task for antitrust task force is uh, concerned about uh, competition uh, on the internet because uh, uh, this technology has changed the way people interact with the world around them uh, and what started as a research project 
uh, in the Department of Defense 40 years ago has now become not just a pervasive element of our society, but it has worldwide implications. Uh, over a billion people use the internet. 71% uh, of all Americans use the internet. Uh, every year we send in this country somewhere in the neighborhood of three trillion emails and uh, it's also quite lucrative uh, but today we have three of the most significant players on the internet testifying before us yahoo google and microsoft uh, all of each one of whom dominates a different aspect of the internet half a million users come to Yahoo's web pages uh, Google has become synonymous with online research uh, and Microsoft continues to be the most dominant software company on earth uh, for the last six months uh, Microsoft and Yahoo have been in frustrating negotiations Microsoft initially attempted to purchase Yahoo and was not favorably received last month Yahoo and Google reached an agreement to display Google ads on Yahoo web pages. Microsoft had a response for that. Uh, they brought in uh, Carl Icahn to try buying Yahoo and, and breaking it up. Given how these powerful companies uh, are in any consolidation has uh, raised the potential of anti-competitive e uh, effects the, D the Department of Justice is scrutinizing the, the Google Yahoo uh, deal uh, and so are a dozen attorneys a general a state attorneys of the across the country attorney generals and so uh, we we come here this afternoon to consider what impact would uh, the proposed Yahoo Google deal have on competition and uh, for their part uh, Google and Yahoo note that uh, their transaction is non-exclusive and that any company including Microsoft is free to pursue a similar arrangement then we need to ask why is it that the members of this committee cannot be trusted to see the signed agreement and we were offered access uh, to the agreement uh, but only if we viewed it at a law firm with no notes allowed and a signed non-disclosure agreement by contrast the committee was given more ready access to the documents surrounding the president's terrorist surveillance program every member was uh, allowed access we were allowed to review the right to review it we were allowed to take notes we weren't forced to sign any agreements of non-disclosure and so I would ask the distinguished counsel for Yahoo uh, to reconsider how, how these things should be worked out with your committee on judiciary a friendly uh, group of members of Congress as I've ever encountered 
And then we need to consider the larger competitive reality of the Internet. Uh, what the competitive landscape would look like if Microsoft is ultimately successful in uh, acquiring Yahoo. Or, or uh, looking at it differently, would it be wise uh, to allow a company that controls 90%, more than 90% of the operating system market and 73% of the browser market to combine forces with the largest seller of display advertising uh, on the internet. Would the combined company simply serve as a counterweight uh, to Google or would this allow them to leverage their market power uh, into other uh, aspects of the internet? And so this committee, the Antitrust Task Force of the House Judiciary Committee, uh, is uh, pleased to have all of you here uh, to join in this discussion. I turn now uh, to our ranking member, Mr. Shabbat of Ohio, uh, for his comments.